turn out the light in the back. Here we go. Good morning. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Today is Tuesday, September 20th, 2011. It's 9 a.m. We're at the Palm Coast Community Center for the regularly scheduled meeting of the Palm Coast City Council. Would you please rise and join me in a pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Roll call, please. Mayor Metz. Here. Vice Mayor Meeker. Here. Council Member DeStefano. Here. Council Member Lewis. Here. Council Member Mormon. Here. Mayor, all members are present. Thank you very much. First item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the September 6th council meeting, the September 13th council workshop, and the September 14th budget hearing. Are there any additions, corrections, or is there a motion for approval? A motion to approve the item. Second. Second. Oh. Move and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries without objection. Agenda item number two, proclamation commemorating Constitution Week. Is there a representative from the Daughters of the American Re Revolution present? If not, Mr. Mormon, you do a solo. Good morning, Mayor Council. Ladies and gentlemen, the proclamation reads, whereas the Constitution of the United States of America is a guardian of our liberties and embodies the principles of limited government in a republic dedicated to rule by law, not by people. And whereas September 16th, 2011, marked the 244th anniversary of the signing of the Constitution of the United States of America, by 1787 Constitutional Convention, and whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition to this magnificent document and its memorable anniversary and to the patriotic celebrations which will commemorate this grand <coughs> occasion. Whereas Public Law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the president of this great country designating September 15th, uh, September 17th through the 24th, 2011 as Constitution Week. Now therefore be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Palm Coast does hereby proclaim September 17th through the 24th, 2011 as Constitution Week in the city of Palm Coast, and we urge all citizens to reaffirm the ideals of the framers of the Constitution by vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us by the guardian of our liberties, remembering that lost rights may never be regained. Signed this 20th day of September, 2011, John Nets, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Agenda item number three, proclamation for National Customer Service Week. Mr. Meeker, and accepting for the city, Cynthia Jessup. You guys have your cards, so I want to make sure you're national customer service. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be violating federal law. Good morning. Whereas our businesses and government systems both locally and across the nation recognize that making a strong commitment to exemplary customer service builds vital customer, tr customer trust and whereas businesses and governments whose professional service representatives pay attention to the needs and expectations of their customers with responsive problem solving abilities and create steadfast satisfied clients and whereas the City of Palm Coast Customer Service Division consistently responds to and supports their residents by committing to the highest standards of service every single day, and whereas Palm Coast residents have relied heavily on the knowledgeable, courteous interchange of information and inquiries with their City Customer Service Division for the past eight years, addressing an average of 84,400 inquiries per year regarding matters such as new service setup, trash, stormwater drainage, water leaks, or billing, 
and whereas since 1992 the United States Congress established the first full week of every October to recognize customer service representatives who work on the front lines each day, now therefore be it proclaimed that the Palm Coast Mayor and the City Council do hereby proclaim the week of October 3rd through October 7th as National Customer Service Week and encourage all citizens to acknowledge the contributions customer service representatives make to this community by providing useful information with diligence and compassion. Ad adopted this 20th day of September 2011, City of Palm Coast, Mayor John Nets. Congratulations, buddy. We really appreciate it. As a person who does customer service in his own way, I appreciate what you guys do. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Yes, we'd like to thank you. Um, we have a short five-minute video that we'd like to show you. I'll have a seat. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for calling the City of Palm Coast. How am I, Director Call? All right, now let me do a work order here because it is scheduled. Okay, that's the odd day. So your days are a little different when it's odd. Hi, welcome to the Frida Zamba swimming pool. How may I help you? My name is Cynthia Jessup. I'm the customer service manager for the City of Palm Coast Utility Department. Customer Service Week is an international event devoted to recognizing the importance of customer service and to honor our staff who, with the highest degree of care and professionalism, serve and support our customers. Here in the City of Palm Coast, we're proud of our customer service representatives for their commitment to serve our residents. I'm Kimberly Small, Customer Service Lead Representative. The International Customer Service Association began Customer Service Week in 1988. In 1992, the U.S. Congress proclaimed Customer Service Week a nationally recognized event, celebrated annually during the first full week in October. Hi, is this George? This is Christine Krauss calling you back from the city of Palm Coast. How are you? All right, we got 11024, please. All right, that change. Thank you for calling City of Palm Coast Utilities. This is Lisa. How can I help you? Thank you for calling the City of Palm Coast. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Thank you. Have a great weekend. Our city staff is indeed dedicated to our customers. Did you know that last year the Customer Service Division answered over 84,417 telephone inquiries? That's 7,032 calls monthly or 352 calls per day. And your address please. Yeah, you gave me five dollars too much. It's fifty-seven ninety-three. So I have twenty, forty, fifty, and sixty. Okay, and so there's your five, and I'm gonna get you some change. Customer service is all around us, not only at the other end of the phone, but represented by the actions of all city employees. I'm John with the Urban Enforcement Department with the City of Palm Coast. Nice to meet you, sir. I'm here about the wildfire mitigation. Next door. I appreciate that. You guys are quick. I think I called yesterday. Okay, ma'am. So that's 6605. So okay. we hope the birthday party goes well and All right. a lot of your guests dress up as pirates. Oh, I hope so. Well, they thought they'll be talking like one. <laughs> <laughs> Calling City of Palm Coast City Manager's Office. This is Nancy. How can I help you? All right, there's receipt. Miss Brown, I will see you again next month to pay your water bill yeah. in a few weeks. Yeah, I'll be back here. Maybe next week. Next week? All right. Uh, take it to the cashier Got you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have, have a good day. day. You too. Bye bye. Do you know what you want to name the business? Have you thought of that yet? Anything yeah, in that area? Oh, something with pause. Okay. Customer service to me is treating people the way you would want to be treated. 
trying to put people at ease and giving them clear information. If you don't have the answer, you can always find it and get back to them as soon as possible. Bottom line is just treating people the way you would want to be treated. Thank you for calling the City of Palm Coast. How many direct a call? One moment, please. Customers are our business. Our goal is to have customer service that is not just the best, but legendary. You have a nice day. Happy customers who get their issues resolved tell four to six people about their experience. Great customer service happens when you exceed expectations. People want to interact with government on their own terms. They want instant, accurate, easy to understand information. I'm Glenn Bolio with the Palm Coast Residential Services and I would just like to say that the city of Palm Coast has been very wonderful to me and the building department has is, is been great and my inspections going in there is very smooth and I'm very happy with the service and Charlie's a wonderful inspector and I'm happy with everything. To deliver great customer service, we strive to understand the needs of our customers, utilizing methods which analyze, anticipate, and administer solutions. We enhance the way those needs may be met. On Coast Customer Service, commitment you can count on. Keep up the good work. <coughs> Agenda item number four, proclamation recognizing October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. George Kastroulis. Before I read this proclamation, I always have to do a little bit of a cell point that Palm Coast Imaging and Radiology Associates kind of strive to what the city is striving for and I compliment the city on doing such a fine video. Um, hopefully it will be on TV. This is a proclamation that there will be 230,480 new cases of invasive breast cancer in 2011, 57,650 new cases of non-invasive breast cancer and 39,520 breast cancer deaths. Whereas breast cancer is not simply about a life-threatening disease, but more importantly about the love of family and friends and the will to live, the courage to fight. Whereas increasing awareness of breast cancer through educating the public and making mammograms easily accessible will save the lives by detecting cancer early when it is most treatable. And whereas Palm Coast residents have long provided a solid base of support and community goodwill for its local partners in health care. Whereas Radiology Associates has led our community in breast cancer awareness and detection for 13 years, providing the first mammography and digital mammogram units in Palm Coast. Breast cancer awareness will be apparent during October with prominent radiology associate imaging center banners adorning the Palm Coast Parkway. Now therefore be it resolved that the Palm Coast City Council recognizes the efforts of its community partners to raise awareness that early detection of breast cancer will save the lives of our wives, mother, grandmothers, aunts, friends, and proclaim October as Breast Cancer Awareness <laughs> Month. We urge all women to have their annual mammogram to extend the longevity of their lives. Adopted the 20th day of September, 2011, City of Palm Coast Mayor John Nets. George, you want to say a few words? I want to thank the council and Mayor Nets uh, for proclaiming this. As a community, we really need to take note of this. Uh, one in nine women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. 
these are so sobering statistics because we don't need to lose these women, these mothers and wives, uh, sisters, because if cancer is found in stage one, the cure rate is between 97 and 100 percent. The problem is there's not enough awareness on how to do self-breast examinations, how to see your doctor yearly, how to get the mammogram so we can catch these cancers. So by efforts such as this, uh, efforts of the American Cancer Society here in Flagler County and of imaging centers <coughs> such as Radiology Associates, uh, if we bring that awareness to the community, we have an ability to save lives, to make these women of our county uh, something other than a statistic but as a real force in our county and community for doing good. So I thank you, uh, the council, uh, Mayor Nets, for uh, looking forward uh, to making October Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Agenda item number six, proclamation recognizing October 8th as Fun Coast Down Syndrome Day. Accepting Paula Wilburn. Mr. Mayor, this proclamation is being presented to the uh, Front Coast Down Syndrome Association. Proclamation, whereas the Buddy Walk was established in 1995 by the National Down Syndrome Society to celebrate Down Syndrome Awareness Month each October. And whereas the Buddy Walk goes the distance to promote acceptance and inclusion for people with Down syndrome and to make and to raise funds necessary to develop innovative and effective programs. And whereas over the past 16 years, the Buddy Walk has grown across our nation from 17 walks to nearly 300 in 2011. <clears throat> with over 285,000 walkers raising over $11.2 million to benefit programs and services for individuals with Down syndrome. And whereas the Fun Coast Down Syndrome Association was founded in 2002 to support local families raising children with Down syndrome, and whereas the Fun Coast Down Syndrome Association will hold their sixth annual Buddy Walk in Central Park at Town Center on Saturday, October 8, 2011, to continue to raise awareness and enhance their position for the need to assist the local Down Syndrome community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Palm Coast Mayor and the City Council do proclaim the second Saturday in October annually as the Fun Down Syndrome Association Day urging all citizens to join neighbors and friends to recognize the value of supporting this commemorable cause and most powerful event. Adopted the 20th day of September 2011, City of Palm Coast, Mayor John Nets. Congratulations. Thank you so much for allowing us this opportunity. Um, my son Keaton has some gifts for the mayor and the council members. Go ahead and give them their hats, baby. Go ahead and just give them to them. Um, he is the reason why the Fun Coast Down Syndrome Association was begun in 2002. Um, Keaton will be, will turn 12 years old the day before our walk this year. His birthday is October 7th. Um, he has been quite an inspiration. Come down this way, baby done this way. An inspiration to us all. Um, I just want Thank to um, invite all of you to come out October 8th to, to the uh, Central Park to enjoy the festivities. And uh, we are looking for volunteers to sit in our dunk tank. <laughs> I have a sign-up sheet. Why are you looking at me? In the back? Because don't you think it'd be so much fun? Yeah. Nice yeah, and refreshing. Paula, Paula, I'll help you out on that. Let me know when it is. You got it. And there's a sign-up sheet back here yeah, for you. Because to, sure. to, if you sign your name, then I, I know how this rocks. Um, but we do, one of the, two things I want to make note of today are that, um, 
the abortion rate for women who have been prenatally diagnosed um, with a child with Down syndrome is 98%. It's a staggering amount. Um, <clears throat> and with the new testings that are coming out, um, that's not going to stop. And it's, it's, you know, some people might say, well, then, you know, it's really nice because we may totally eliminate the possibility of having people with Down syndrome um, in our world, in our nation. But look at this little boy. <laughs> and you know, they're awesome, awesome people. Um, one of the things that we're doing with the monies that we raise with our walk is we have established Camp I Can, which is um, right now at this point, it's a once a month literacy camp. Um, where we have our kids coming and building their um, literacy and math skills and we are teaching pre-literacy skills to the babies age three months on up um, all run by volunteers it's it's an incredible thing that um, the funds are helping us do that's just one of the things but that's our biggest so um, I just thank you again for the time thank you Thank you. And um, Mayor, you're coming out that day, right? You're going to come and read our proclamation to the Absolutely. crowd. And if we can get you in that tank, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Ready? What is the date on that? Yeah, Paula, what's, what's, the what's the date for the tank? October 8th. That's three weeks away. Yeah, I was hoping I was going to be out of town. <laughs> <laughs> is that at the uh, town center? It's at town yeah. center, yes, ma'am, it is. Uh, we'll be there from 10 until 2. And um, it's, it's a very fun event. It's kind of a carnival type atmosphere. Uh, we serve, uh, I'll just throw this out there, we serve approximately 900 families in Flagler, East Volusia, and St. John's counties. And um, we are making a difference in our community. Sign me up for 10 o'clock. <laughs> All right. Thank you. But I'm not going to be there after 11 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll get you in there first. That's the day I have my uh. seminar. Gender item number six, presentation about the Palm Coast Business Assistance Center and its expo. Bo, you going to lead us off? Yes, sir. Good morning, uh, Mayor <coughs> Council. Um, I'm joined by, of course, Joe Roy, uh, who heads up the Business Assistance Center. I want to do two things today. I just wanted to kind of showcase the website uh, first, and then Joe's going to speak about the upcoming expo. Um, some of you might have visited the website already. Um, we've been getting, you know, it's been up about 30 days. Um, I just got some statistics from the IT department. About 1,000, uh, 33 unique visitors have visited the site about 3,500 times. Um, we've actually had folks uh, register for the expo on the website and request appointments with Joe as well. Um, once again, it's, it's kind of the start. It's a work in progress, of course, but there's also a, a lot of great information. Um, including, you know, our location and, of course, all of our monthly reports are put here. Uh, once again, something Joe uh, believes in a lot is, is making sure we report on our activities. Um, the blog component, which is, is kind of new, um, you'll see uh, some, some posts by Joe here, of course, uh, you know, and also highlighting some of the, the local business uh, news here that's relevant and good news uh, from our different media sources. Um, also, you can request an appointment. There's uh, lots of great data and links, and of course, um, the expo page. So um, thank you to IT for putting this together so quickly, um, and we hope to continue to add more information to it. And with that, I'll turn it over to Joe to talk a little bit about the business expo. Thank you. The, uh, the website is actually drawing a lot more traffic and a lot more interest, and as uh, Bo mentioned, the fact that we have a blog up there and we're getting comments to the blogs uh, we try to use that as a relevant place to put out information pertinent to the small business community. And when they come to the site now, they can actually register for the expo. Uh, and one of the things that's happened in, uh, within the last couple of days anyway is that uh, UCF and the regional SBDC in Orlando have become uh, significant sponsors of the event, which is allowing us to reduce our price. Uh, so what used to be uh, $200 for a business to register and have a table and participate in all of the events of the day is now $100. So that basically what we've done is we've taken away any cost of the booth and the uh, $100 is really the uh, out-of-pocket expenses that we incur to put on the entire event. So we're very pleased about that. Uh, 
this week, uh, I think our first ad goes into uh, uh, the observer. And uh, you can see that you know, what we're really trying to do here is to highlight all of our sponsors. Uh, we have some significant sponsors, and really it's through the, uh, the ability of, of, of a number of our sponsors that are uh, allowing us to get down to that $100 price. Uh, Ted Anders, who's from uh, Flagler Beach, he's the CEO of Nature's Nurse. He will be the keynote speaker. And we've, we've already finished up with all of our training. Uh, Microsoft, when I was out at the annual conference in San Diego for the ASBDC, we, I spoke with Microsoft, and Microsoft is a sponsor of this event. Uh, and part of uh, the commitment is they'll be here talking about cloud computing, and we'll have a drawing for Microsoft Office as well as uh, uh, Windows 7 uh, will be door prizes. So uh, that was a pretty interesting uh, discussion that we had with them and their support of the event as well. So uh, overall, we're making uh, significant progress. We think that you know, what we're doing is we're trying to incorporate as many businesses that want to, to come. Uh, we'll figure that out with uh, the Hammock Beach Resort um, uh, when we hit a, a point at which we simply cannot take any more. But right now, everything is on track. October the 7th is the date. We're three weeks away, and we're pretty excited about it. Thank you very much. Um, Council Mr. questions, comments? Uh, how many vendors do you have to date signed up? I'm not sure of the exact number. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think uh, as of the other day, we were over 40. Right. So, I mean, and each day now, what's happening is we're, we're finally getting out. We're getting uh, some attention in advertising. We're doing a lot of speaking. People are hearing about us on many different sites. And uh, so we're in the, we're in the uh, I guess, it's the third quarter right now. We're three weeks away, and I think we're filling up fast. I think uh, a great um, code of thanks to the people coming forward to help reduce that cost is is really phenomenal right now because of the business, small businesses, you know, the 200 was high and, and we have to, I know we have to break even at least. So I think we really have to thank the sponsors for doing this. This is fantastic. Yeah, and I'm sure you were behind it. There, there's a lot of people, a lot okay. of good people working hard behind this and uh, I think that's the benefit. And really the, the people that are gonna win are the small business community. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a chance for our small businesses to come together and to really network mm -hmm. and to showcase products and services that heretofore people have not realized exist within Flagler County. Mm -hmm. uh, and the more we talk about buy local, uh, the more important it is for all of our business community to understand that this is an event for them. Okay. The council. Mr. Lewis. Uh, I have, just reading that, uh, I have one or two questions. Um, what role is the county playing in this? The county? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they would be a participant. Uh, the reason I ask you, it says this is the uh, join, us, join us for the first annual flag the county business as opposed to the regional business, uh, business assistant corp or the Palm Coast business assistant corp says flag a county. Uh, that's probably my words that I put into that. Basically, what we're trying to do is uh, to promote all businesses within Flagler County. Mm -hmm. So that's why we kind of we qualified that by saying this is a Flagler County business uh, expo. Well, that bothers me because um, it, it's Palm Coast or it's regional or whatever, but it's our effort that's making this happen. Yes. So that and, bothers and I me. I agree. And I think that's really where the sponsorship comes when you look at it really how this is all being put on. The fact is that we say, let's, I mean, we talk about the Palm Coast Business Assistance Center getting back to business, and so I understand what you're saying, and, and I'll take that to heart. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Mr. Morgan. Yes, uh, I had a discussion yesterday with the individual, and he was asking me if he didn't want to purchase a booth, but wanted to attend and just walk around and talk to people, how much, uh, is that do they pay at the door do they have to register in order to participate or what uh, good question we're working on that right now and we'll have I mean we will have provisions for that that'll take place probably in the afternoon but we haven't uh, finalized what how we're going to do that but yes that will be available is there going to be a fee there will be a, a, a small fee yes okay Uh, 
Uh, Mr. Lewis, do you want to ask your question? Yes. Um, we're reducing the, uh, the fee that we're charging the participants. Uh, and I'm sure we have people who already um, paid their $200. So you're processing that back to them? I, I Actually, what we're to. doing is we're providing them uh, a free ticket, an additional ticket to the expo, uh, so that they can bring someone with them. If they prefer the, to get their money back, then we will refund the money. Excellent. Thank you. All right, good. Thank you. Other council questions? Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> by council consensus, uh, we've been asked to move agenda item 9 up because of pressures of time. Is that acceptable to everyone? Sure. sure. Okay. Agenda item number nine. This is appoint five applicants to the Code Enforcement Board. Good morning, Mayor and City Council, Virginia Smith City Clerk. Currently, there are three openings and two vacancies on the Code Enforcement Board. Barbara will distribute to you individual voting sheets for each seat that is available. As you vote, when an applicant is appointed, we will scratch their name from the voting sheets prior to your next vote. Mr. Copeland currently is an alternate and he has expressed a desire to become a regular member. The first seat was occupied by Mr. Beck. Mr. Beck is eligible to be reappointed with a simple majority. Please place your vote now and pass back to Barbara. Virginia, go over one more time. How many votes are we doing in round one? One. Just one, Just one. which is Mr. Beck's seat. Got it. And he is eligible for reappointment and he wishes to be reappointed. Correct. Okay. motion to appoint Mr. Beck. So moved. Second. Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good. Mr. Mayor, just for the record, could the clerk read out the votes and who voted for whom? There's five of us and there's five, five affirmative one. votes five for affirmative Beck. Votes. Okay. So everyone? <laughs> yes. All everyone one vote. Members yeah. voted. Okay. That was easy. That was easy. Okay. The, the second words. seat was occupied by Mr. Klinkenberg. Mr. Klinkenberg has expressed a desire to be reappointed. However, Mr. Klinkenberg has completed three terms, and as per city code, due to term limits, it will take a four-fifths vote for Mr. Klinkenberg to be reappointed. Please place your votes now. Unless it's unanimous. Vice Mayor Meeker voted for Mr. Daly. Council Member Lewis for Mr. Klinkenberg. Council Member Mormon for Mr. Klinkenberg. Council Member DeStefano for Mr. Klinkenberg. Mayor Nets for Mr. Klinkenberg. Mr. Klinkenberg received four votes. Mr. Daly won. And it takes a four-fifths? Mm-hmm. Correct. 
there a motion to approve uh, Mr. Klinkenberg? A motion to approve Mr. Klinkenberg. I second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries without objection. The third seat was occupied by Pam Richardson. Mrs. Richardson has um, chosen not to reapply. I haven't done this since middle school. I know. <laughs> Where's the blue book? <laughs> and notes in school. <laughs> for Mr. Copeland, Council Member Mormon for Mr. Copeland, Council Member Lewis for Mr. Daly, and Mayor Nets for Mr. Copeland. So two votes for Mr. Daly, three votes for Mr. Copeland. Is there a motion to approve Mr. Copeland for the Code Enforcement Board? So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Copeland is appointed. The fourth seat was vacated by Paul Wilhelmson. He has resigned. Okay. Now maybe you can refresh our memory as to who's who's left. <laughs> Who has left? I'm sorry. Beck, Clinkenberg, and Copeland have been appointed. Right. Okay, so we can cross out Beck, Copeland, Clinkenberg. For clarification also, are we trying to keep every district represented? It's not mandatory in the charter for the Code Enforcement Board. Members of Stefano voted for Mr. Doonan. Count Vice Mayor Meeker voted for Mr. Daly. Council Member Lewis for Mr. Daly. Council Member Mormon for Mr. Daly. Mayor Nets for Mr. Daly. Mr. Daly received four votes. Mr. Doonan won. Is there a motion to approve Mr. Daly? A motion to approve Mr. Daly. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Daly is appointed. Thank you very much. The first alternate seat was vacated by Peter Shannon. He has resigned. You may vote for this alternate seat now. <coughs> and now we're crossing out Beck, Daly, Lincolnburg and Copeland. Shouldn't have all this fun. <laughs> 
Drum roll, please. Yeah. <laughs> One more, right? Council Member Stefano voted for Mr. Doonan. Vice Mayor Meeker voted for Mr. Doonan. Council Member Lewis voted for Mr. Doonan. Council Member Mormon, Ms. McDowell. And Mayor Nets, Ms. McDowell. Mr. Doonan received three votes, Ms. McDowell, two. Is there a motion to? I'll motion to approve Point. Mr. Doonan. Second. 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 All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries without objection. Since Mr. Copeland has been appointed to the board, his seat is now vacated. So you please, please vote for the alternate number two. <laughs> is there any end to this? That's it. Yeah, this will do it. <laughs> I think we're rapidly approaching the end. I'm rapidly hoping. running out of names. <laughs> and out of paper. Out of paper. <laughs> oh, okay. Who's left? Oh, my God. All right. Beck is in, right? Yes. Beck is, Bill is in. Yes. Doonan is in, right? Yes. Klinkenberg is in. Yes. Putting it the other way around, <laughs> you have Dolamore and McDowell. <laughs> Can't tell the scorecard about the players or the players about the scorecard. The scorecard. Yeah. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. you well, sure? you don't leave yet, don't you? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> no surprises. We might do this again. We haven't had to do two votes yet. <laughs> Vice Mayor Meeker voted for Ms. McDowell. Council Member DeStefano for Ms. McDowell. Mayor Nets for Ms. McDowell. Mr. Uh, mm -hmm. Council Member Mormon for Ms. McDowell. And Council Member Lewis for Ms. Delamore. Ms. McDowell received four <coughs> votes and Ms. Delamore for one. Is there a motion to appoint Ms. McDowell to so the moved. alternate seat? And second. Yeah. Moved and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries without objection. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, thank you. Down to Agenda item number seven, an ordinance relating to extending the temporary moratorium on internet cafes. We might note for the record that our usual city attorney is not here. He is ably represented by his wife. Oh, thank you very much, Mayor. Ordinance of the City of Palm Coast, Florida, extending a temporary moratorium for an additional 180 days on the issuance of any business tax license, permit, conditional use approval, site plan approval, and any other official action of the City of Palm Coast having the effect of permitting or allowing the construction and or operation of the following businesses using slot machines or slot machine-like equipment or simulated gambling devices within the City of Palm Coast game rooms, arcades, internet cafes, sweepstakes, redemption centers, or establishments, as more specifically described in Ordinance 2011-10, excluding approvals and permits for the continuance of an existing business. This temporary moratorium as extended shall apply to all real property located within the corporate limits of the City of Palm Coast, providing for definitions, providing for a procedure for extraordinary hardship, providing for severability conflict and an effective date. Thank you very much. Uh, city manager is at conference, so we won't have any comments from him. This is uh, an item that was discussed at workshop, and it's simply extending an existing moratorium for an additional 180 days. Are there any council questions? Aye. Mr. Lewis. Just want to know, um, the, um, our attorney's wife, is she an attorney? <laughs> she is. <laughs> and how? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you remember on planning board? We were on planning I board. I know who you are. Yeah. But for, the, for the public. Just want to verify for the public. I just want to make sure that they're aware Thank that you. you are not just a, his wife, but you are also. Yeah, we didn't slip you in just, just because you were his wife. Yeah, just because like you were pretty. <laughs> <laughs> prettier than him. Prettier. Prettier than him. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I think also that uh, 
she's also lawyer for the planning board. So she's very familiar with the city of Palm Coast. That's all. Anything else? Uh, any other council questions on agenda item number seven? No. If not, let's open the meeting from the public. Anything that public wish to be heard on agenda item number seven? Please give us your name, limit your contribution to three minutes. Jack Cal, Palm Coast. What happens after 180 days if nothing is, <clears throat> is resolved? We'll get you an answer to that one. Joe Kinane, I want to congratulate the mayor on his winning tenure. <clears throat> on this item, who is the sponsor of the ordinance? Who would staff sponsor the ordinance? Where, why is the ordinance here? I'll answer your question when you're done with your presentation. Okay. Um, I'm against extending the ordinance. Number one, we have too many ordinances and we don't need this ordinance. And the reason for it is this. I have recently visited all of the internet cafes here in Palm Coast. And my observation is that they're empty, half empty. They're not doing that tremendous a business that it's really a concern of the city to put a moratorium through that's totally unnecessary. Why don't you let the market forces work? Businesses only grow where there is a product or service that is necessary. They will level the playing field on their own without your involvement. Let capitalism and economics work, not bureaucracy, which another ordinance is. Why don't you cut out the waste? That, no, all right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Since she introduced this particular amendment, I'd like to know. Your if, name, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Lynn Weaver. I'd like to know if Miss Wife has a different name. I think it's disrespectful to her to not use her professional name. She's got a lot of years of education, and to refer to her as someone's wife is disrespectful by the council. Thank you. Thank you. Go to the podium. This is on the agenda item for internet cafes. Good morning. Um, my name's Ernie Roth, and I've been living in Palm Coast for 22 years. And as far as these casinos go, I think, I don't know how they got in here, and I think they should be banned altogether, and I'll tell you why. Because Palm Coast right now is, as far as I understand, is the highest in the state for unemployment. We have 14, almost 15 percent unemployment. These little casinos hire two people to run them, because I've been in them just like this gentleman has. And you're lucky if you find any more than one person running the casino at a time, number one. Number two, on a Friday or Saturday night, they're very busy. During the week, they're even making money. And we could solve this unemployment problem we have in Palm Coast very easy. All you have to do is tell Donald Trump to come down and put up a regular casino. <laughs> because we got all this land on US-1 that cost us millions of dollars to clear up and nothing's happening. And if you want it further, we can go further into Benel. There's nothing but farmland <clears throat> that's plenty for sale. A casino is going to hire anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 employees because you got maids, you got cleaning people, you got dealers, and on and on. You got security. So instead of fooling around with these mom and pop sh little casinos that are doing nothing but making Palm Coast look stupid because we're the little gambling capital of Florida right now, half the other counties are banning them or, or the government's closing them down because they're illegal and government 
Governor Scott right now has got two casinos being built in Tallahassee. And my personal opinion is, if we're going to go this way with casinos, let's go the way we should be and have a casino that's going to employ more than two people. Because people are going to gamble whether you have two people, one little mom and pop shop, or you have a big casino. If you have a big casino, you're going to get people from Georgia coming down, from Jacksonville coming down, just like your casino boats and just like you have in, in um, Fort Lauderdale and below. From Fort Lauderdale to Miami, you got 15 to 20 casinos right now. They're all making money, and every county is making mucho money on the taxes they're charging these people. I'd like to know what your tax base is. 15 seconds, sir. Excuse me? 15 seconds. Oh. 15 seconds. Oh, okay. I got a lot more to talk about, but okay, I'll give you 15 seconds. We need the, the unemployment to be dropped here, and we need the economy to go up. Having a regular casino is going to do that, because you're not just going to have the casino, you're going to have a hotel and other things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker. So you approach the podium and close the public portion of the meeting. Come back, but let's see if we can answer some of the questions. What happens after the moratorium expires? It's simply that, it expires. It is the desire of council, uh, I believe, for the state to take some definitive action one way or the other, and we hope that they will do so before the moratorium expires. Uh, on the advice of the attorney, um, Mr. Reichman, uh, his sense is that extending a moratorium beyond one year would be problematic uh, because you're then getting into Burt Harris territories. You are putting somebody permanently out of business, long term out of business. So we will extend this for the balance of the year and hope that the county will take, or the state will take action. As far as who sponsored this, there is no uh, sponsor within staff. This was created by the attorney at the direction of the city council. And as far as opening a casino, interestingly enough, gambling is illegal in the state of Florida. Of course, there are notable exceptions uh, granted to some of the Indian tribes uh, and some other loopholes in the law. Uh, the question of whether or not we would have a casino in, in Palm Coast or in Flagler County or in Northeast Florida is a moot question unless the legislature drastically changes its position. Back to City Council. Any additional questions, comments, or a motion? A motion to approve the extension of the moratorium. Second. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Just before the vote, I was going to add that another purpose of the moratorium, I think as you originally mentioned it, was to have staff study the issue in conjunction with watching the legislative session, which the moratorium does expire right at the end of the legislative session. but to also allow staff to consider potential zoning regulations or other kinds of police regulations. Just wanted to add that in. Yeah, that, that certainly would be. If the, if the state does not choose to take action on this issue, uh, then I think it's incumbent on city council to uh, take whatever actions the council deems necessary to regulate this as we would regulate any other business activity in town. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to approve. No, sir. Public portion of meeting is closed on this item. Be happy to talk to you afterwards. Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries without objection. Agenda item number eight an ordinance relating to firearms. Mrs. Reichman. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Coast, Florida, amending the Code of Ordinances to remove firearm regulations consistent with the adoption of House Bill 45 by the Florida Legislature, also known as the Joe Carlucci Uniform Firearms Act, preempting Please. all. I'm sorry. No problem. Preempting all local firearm regulations to the State of Florida, providing for codification, severability, conflicts, and effective date. Okay. Uh, this is simply bringing the City of Palm Coast Code of Ordinances into compliance with legislation that is pa was passed by the State of Florida. 
Quite a few years ago, the state of Florida enacted legislation preempting all firearm regulation to the state and essentially prohibiting local governments, cities and counties, from enacting any ordinances or enforcing any ordinance that were different or that differed from the uh, statutes established by the state. <clears throat> that was done a number of years ago. In this most recent legislative session, the state went a step further and enacted legislation making this a personal, making enforcement of any uh, local firearms ordinances a personal uh, wrongdoing on the part of city staff and the city council and establishing a $5,000 fine, personal fine, uh, for any such action. So this, uh, this ordinance proposes to bring the city ordinances into compliance with the state. Uh, no changes other than simply to take things off the books that are unenforceable. Council questions? Hearing none, we'll open the meeting to the public. Any from the public wish to be heard on agenda item number eight? Seeing no one approach the podium, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. Come back to City Council. Additional questions, comments, or a motion? Well, I'm, I'm prepared to move the item. I, I really wanted to poke some more fun at the uh, uh, prohibition against uh, launching model rockets in, uh, in the parks, but I won't. Um, <laughs> even though I looked up some statistics on, you know. Having just said you're not going how, to, you're how, going how, to. How many, <laughs> how, many, how many car fires happen, therefore, will ban cars from parking and Anyway, no, I won't. Anyway, uh, uh, unless there are any other comments, I'll motion to approve the agenda item. Yeah, <laughs> second, second, thank you. Okay. Moved and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries without objection. This brings us to the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to remove any items from the consent agenda? Hearing none, uh, may I have a motion with regard to consent agenda items number 10 and 11? I'll motion to approve items 10 and 11. Second? Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries without objection. This brings us to public participation. Anyone from the public wish to be heard on any, any item not on today's agenda, please give us your name, limit your contribution to three minutes. Good morning, <clears throat> Don Jerk. I've been a resident since the first day of spring in 1980. Oh. Uh, I'm not here to ask for fences, for parks, or anything like that. I don't have a park, and I'm very happy with that. I also don't have a problem with children. They all know me by, by my first name. My problem is, and it's a bad day to say it because they, the service part of the city was just complimented on their fine service, but I have seemed to have a lack of it. Uh, I've been trying to get my swale taken care of for four years. They've done all around me, but they can't seem to do mine. I've had people in front of my house four times, superintendents, so on and so forth, and I get promised, but nothing ever happens. I have a very dangerous situation on my driveway. I've got extensions on either side of the pipes, which the builder put in, and they've moved, and somebody could fall in and break a leg or something. I feel that somebody should come and look at it besides the superintendent who does nothing for me. That's all, thank you. Yeah. Sir, if you'd see me afterwards so I can get your address. My address is Six Weiss Place. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Next speaker. Morning. Lynn Weaver, 5719 North US Highway 1. I came to see you about six months ago regarding the stormwater issue. And uh, Mr. Moden took my information and was going to be working through the abatement. And that's all I've heard. Um, I've sent an email to the utilities and I've gotten no response. I sent an email to my councilman and I got no response. And it's kind of a mystery procedure. There's nothing about it on your website. 
No one in utilities seems to know anything. I'm, I've watched the little memos as you've cleaned up this part, and Mr. Moden gives his reports to the council as to how you're moving along. But I have no idea if I'm going to have the opportunity to submit documents, whether mine has been reviewed. There's been absolutely no correspondence. Now, the other thing that's happening is late fees. And I know that this was addressed by the council at one point, but nowhere in the amendment or anywhere else can I find anything about what's going to happen with these late fees. Now, utilities or someone in the city knew that this was a bad ordinance that we had. But it didn't stop anybody from filing a lien against my property that now shows up on my credit reports. So as this matter continues and continues and continues, there continues to be financial losses for the people involved. Can we have a little transparency in this? And can I get some answers regarding my specific situation, um, either through an email or through Mr. Moden? Because I know you all don't have the answer, but you're the people that we've elected to run the city. And this seems to be a continuing issue as far as transparency and answers. You've heard me in front of you numerous times begging for answers to questions because nobody will respond. Sadly, that's one of the things I've heard from developers that have looked at my property, that nobody will put anything in writing. Mr. Nats, congratulations. You have five, term, five more years here. Maybe you can take the, the bull by the horns and make sure that citizens do get responses, just like the gentleman with his swales. We have an awful lot of good people, but nobody that seems to want to step up and lead. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning. My name is Maureen Jones, and I'm an attorney for Gus and Colleen Ashram. Um, and um, here in reference to pars, it's uh, address 108 and 92 Bulldog Drive. Um, we are here requesting that um, resolution 2004-22 and 2004-resolution-23 be amended and rescinded as far as they affect the Ajram property. Um, we've been informed by the attorneys representing the city of Palm Coast that 108 and 92 Bulldog Drive are no longer needed for the State Road 100 um, corridor redevelopment and therefore will no longer need to be acquired. So we are requesting that those re those two resolutions along with any other resolutions that affect the Ajram property be amended so that there's no cloud on the, that, the, those two particular parcels so he's able to um, sell his title, his property with uh, the title clear and free of any government action that may be pending. Um, if that is not the case, if we've been misinformed and you do need the property, then we're here to ask the council to direct the city attorney to enter into a pre-suit mediation so that this issue can be resolved and Mr. Ajram can, um, you know, continue on with his life without any government interference. Thank you. Would you be so kind as to give the city clerk those resolution numbers, please? Sure. It's well, the ones that we've noticed in reference are 2004-22 and 2004-23. But there may be other uh, that gives you the author the authority and, and announces the necessity for the city attorney to to take the property or purchase the property. But there may be um, other references <coughs> throughout your resolution and ordinance is history that um, affect, that, that discuss the necessity to take this property and we're just requesting that um, this, this property be free and clear without cloud so that he can go about his business like every citizen in this city. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Joe Kinane failed candidate for mayor in 1999, 2007, and 2011. I'd like the following statement read into the record. I've already given the clerk a copy. I thank my loyal supporters and will con continue to stay involved in local government. I'm sorry that a woman has not entered the race for Palm Coast City Council 
as I know that we have many talented women here that would make a difference. I support Dennis Cross and his efforts to win a seat on the council and also Bill McGuire. I thank them for their involvement. I agree that we have a great city and in time will grow again. I'm sorry that the two-party system has been driven underground and would like to see us change its charter from a non-partisan voting city to a partisan one. Keep in mind that we are a new city and still learning as we go forward. It's up to the residents to keep the local government honest and we must stay involved and vote when we have the opportunity. If we fail to do this, we will lose our freedoms. I thank God for the opportunity to serve my church, country, and family. I thank Charles Erickson, a neighbor and friend, for a race well conducted, and I wish him future success. Not in the record, but uh, I have a copy here of the local news journal, Sunday edition, Mark Lane. I highlighted one item. Palm Coast Mayor's race turnout was just under 6%, the lowest in recorded history. This either means we are very negligent in this city or that we're so happy with the government and so happy living here and the conditions we live under that we want to keep things just the way they are. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Dennis Cross, 47 Front Street. Uh, I spoke at the Flagler County Commissioner's meeting last evening uh, and requested their help in the sense of getting the nonpartisan candidates for city council to be able to participate at the Creekside Festival in Princess Plate. And uh, I read a memo which will basically de define this, the situation there. Only 10% of our voters turned out for the primary election. As a candidate for the District 3 Council seat, I decided to extend extra effort to make voters aware of who the candidates are and the local issues prior to the November 8th general election. Our city deserves a respectable voter turnout if we expect Palm Coast to continue to be a great place to live. The Creekside Festival at Prince's Place is being conducted on October 8th and 9th. On September 16th, I submitted an application and fee to the Chamber of Commerce for a 10 foot by 10 foot space to meet the voters and distribute my political literature. I received a phone call later that day from Doug Baxter, President of the Chamber of Commerce, saying my application was being returned he said no political activities were allowed. About five minutes later, Doug Baxter called again and said political parties, Democrats, Republicans, Tea Parties, could have a space, but candidates could not have a space. He said I could participate at one of these three tents. I told Mr. Baxter that the city election was nonpartisan and I could not present myself as a party candidate. I also told him the city clerk notified all candidates in July that House Bill 1355 passed May 19, 2011. It changed the election law. It states, I quote, nonpartisan candidate makes campaigning based upon party affiliation a violation of Florida Statute Chapter 106. The Chamber of Commerce staff has a right to not support me for the District 3 Council seat. They do not have a right to deny me an equal opportunity to meet voters and listen to their concerns. Any independent or nonpartisan candidate has the same political right as any party to appear at this public event. I'm here this morning to request your help, too. If each of you who feel it's fair for the nonpartisan candidates to appear at that, would you please call Doug Baxter and the Chamber of Commerce 
and ask them to treat us all fairly. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker. Seeing no one approach the podium, we'll close the public portion of the meeting, come back to council. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Mr. Adams, Six Weiss Place, will you give us a status report when you had a chance to look into it? Mr. Moden, similar request for Ms. Weaver's property. Let us know what the status is. Let her know what the status is. Um, City Clerk, uh, would you please put uh, Attorney Jones' request uh, on our workshop so that we can resolve that issue one way or the other? I mean, it's, I agree, it's difficult being in limbo. Mr. Mayor? Uh, yes. I do have uh, information that staff is moving forward on that matter to clear that up. Okay, well, just yeah. so I'd like council to be aware of it. Absolutely. So I'd like, I'll work next it's workshop. coming to council. Okay. Um, council members, you heard uh, Mr. Cross' request. Uh, be motivated as you see fit. I, can we talk about it or not? Um, under... Okay. Discussion by City Council, you certainly can. So, which brings us to discussion by City Council of matters not on the agenda. Mr. Mormon, we'll start with you. Nothing, sir. Mr. Lewis. Nothing. Mrs. DeStefano. I have several issues. Um, first of all, I want to go back to Ms. Weaver's issue of waiting six months. Um, it doesn't do us any good to do a beautiful presentation about customer service. If we have clients out there, our citizens not getting responses. And so um, I would like to at least get a satisfactory response within 48 hours and copy in city council. Um, I, I just, I brag about our city and I brag about our city council. And it distresses me to sit up here and hear these complaints of one person waiting for four years and somebody else waiting. Now, I know there are extenuating circumstances. I'm very aware of that. And sometimes you hear one story and then when you go into the file and see another story, but I would like a resolution and a response to the city council. I myself would like to follow up on this as well as the mayor. The mayor, I know from all the years I've worked with him, how fast he responds to the citizens. So um, those individuals of staff, I really, really encourage you to get an answer and let's get this issue resolved. I've been here eight years and I've heard Ms. Weaver many times and uh, it just seems that responses where the problem is not solved. Now on another issue that I'm distressed about and I heard about it first thing this morning before I came to council and that is that the, our, our city council is nonpartisan. And each and every one of us run for council as a nonpartisan. Now, I don't see us any different than a Democrat, Republican, or Tea Party. The Tea Party is relatively new in this community and throughout the country, and now they're allowed to have a booth. We, on city council for the last 11 years, have been nonpartisan. And I would like either the city or this, this council to write a letter in support of having an NPA booth, nonpartisan booth, at this uh, festival. Um, they, the uh, authorities at the chamber are saying, well, you can still attend and walk around with your literature. Well, I'll be one, if I was attending the festival, I, would, I don't want somebody coming up and, and buttonhole and, and talk to me about their mission. I would like to go, if I'm interested, I'll go to their table and I'll find out. So um, I'm proposing that this council write a letter in support of having an NPA, only because we members here, sitting here, we all get elected through the NPA. So we have a vested interest that somewhere down the line we may want to have a booth in four years or six years or eight years. So um, I don't know, Mr. Mayor, if this has to come up, if I could make a proposal now, if I have to wait, um, can we have a consensus? But I just, you know, Mr. Mormon is running, you know, the NPA could be anybody that's running for office could be on that booth. 
They could share the cost, have that booth. And I, I just feel that it's a disservice to our community by not allowing this. Sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> how do, how do you really feel about it, Mary? <laughs> well, I, I really would like our council to make a decision if it's a nod our heads or shake our Well, the faces only thing or... I'm wondering about what you're talking about is, okay, at the Republican Party has a booth. Right. There's somebody who writes a check right. to the um, chamber. Right. At the Democratic Party has a booth, somebody right. writes a check. Tea Party. I assume that there's a Tea Party with an organ, or not I assume, I, we already no. know that there's a Tea Party with an organization with a structure who writes a mm -hmm. check to have the Tea Party there. What is the organizational structure of not politically affiliated? One of the is candidates could write the check or the, the three or four candidates could share it, it and write one check. Well, and is it even required? I, I don't know what the requirements are. Again, this isn't our deal, this is. No, it's not our know. deal, but we have a vested interest in the future. If you were running and you were told that you could not put a booth up unless you went to the Democrat or Republican or Tea Party. I understand. I'm just wondering what's the head, where is the head of the organization that files for that? I don't, I don't know would, if it's required or not. It would be the candidate, the candidate, candidate or the candidate's campaign manager. Yeah. Maybe Denny Cross could Council, answer that. May, may I add some information? Normally we would not permit it, but if, if a council member wishes to hear from you. I would like to hear your response. Following the county commission meeting, uh, I spoke with Doug Baxter. And I said, remember, I have already made the permit application and paid the fee. I said, if I contact the other three council candidates and we all agree to share one tent. Nonpartisan candidates would be the banner on there. Would you then take that to your board and ask them to reconsider and permit us to do that? And his answer was if, if you contact the council that yes, then I will at least take it to my board for a vote. And, and that pretty much was the attitude from the commissioners last night. Uh, the reason they deferred any decision until October 3rd was to give Doug Baxter a little more time to consider his position on the issue. So I, th I think we can work it out. I mean, between the four of us, we can share the expense. Uh, some, we have to get a tent, we have to get tables. Well, we can work it out, and, 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 and I guarantee you the banner would say nonpartisan candidates. And, and this, this, I think, takes care of, uh, of all of us uh, because with the new change in the, in the law, uh, you don't want to go stand at a political party and be charged with violation of uh, House Bill 1355. I hope that additional Thank information you. Thank you. will occur. Okay. I have. Mr. Lewis? I'd like uh, to have the same. Mr. Lewis? Yeah. Um, we, we're all nonpartisans up here, and I have no, no problem with that part of it. I just want to make sure that whatever we do, we, we do it properly and follow the, follow the proper procedures. We can't just at, at the spur of the moment make a decision unless we have some uh, uh, indication that we have gone through the proper research and review. So before we uh, move hastily ahead and m make a decision to do something, I think we should hold off and look at it at it much further and, and, and much more detail. I think uh, if based on Mr. Cross' analysis of what was said last night at the County Commission, I think it would be appropriate for individual council members to express their opinions to Mr. Baxter. Uh, Chamber of Commerce is a, a separate entity unto itself. I think we could speak to Mr. Baxter, speak to the members of his board of directors that we know about. Uh, I trust the county will, because it's county property, I trust that they will uh, have a, a specific interest in, in fairness. No, Mr. Kinane, sorry. 
You're not a candidate at the moment, so you have no dog in this fight. I was just an MPA candidate, though, and lost. Were. All right, Joe, go ahead. Thanks what the very heck? much, Mr. We've Mayor. got a relatively short as, as a past nonpartisan <laughs> candidate, there is a structure for how do you uh, control this. This is an answer to Mr. Meeker. And it is, if the person has paid their check and filed with the city clerk and can legally go forward as a candidate, then they should be sitting in the booth. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Meeker, I think we're up to you. Discussion. You know, I, there's nothing that I need to cover <laughs> today. Mary <laughs> 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 covered it, right? Yeah. Discussion by city attorney of matters not on the agenda. I have no report, Mr. Oh, Mayor. my. You, sure, Bill. I mean, I, of course. I Absolutely. In, in Go ahead. I, 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 I wasn't going, going to get involved in that because I, I thought that, um, that the proper um, uh, action was being taken. But uh, Ms. Weaver um, is correct in terms of um, her um, um, requesting uh, assistance uh, from the city. And um, the fact that she's here today saying that she has not received any, any assistance or any follow-up, it, it, it bothers me because Ms. Weaver sent me an email. And, and, that, and the email that she sent me, I referred it to the city manager for action. Uh, so it's not that no one is paying attention to your emails. Uh, we are paying attention to your emails, but we, we need to sometimes follow up. So I, I apologize if that was not done, and I'm, I'm sure we'll get to uh, some resolution. All right. Since there is no city manager, I guess there's no report then, huh? <laughs> Mr. Meeker. I'll motion to adjourn the meeting. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you for your attendance and participation. My goodness.